Hey guys, do check last out here back with another video. Uh, Mr. Man posted this. Um, on on oh right, on where and Matthew McDermott. I hope I, I hope I, um, I spell, uh, said that right. Uh, Ma Ma uh, Matthew McDermott, global head of digital assets, uh, Goldman Sachs. Um, 2023 was the year of proof of concept. 24 is going to be uh, the year of production live in op interoperable manner, where we are where we have sorry um, multiple institutions trading against each other which are commercially viable and scalable 2025 is the year of exceptional growth and this is just in time for the crypto halving so i'm going to play you this video i think that at least from from the way that i look at it if i look at the at the timeline for me the year 24 is the year when we, 23 was a lot of pocs right done been there done that 24 needs to be about going to production live in an inter interoperable manner where we have multiple financial institutions trading between them assets and projects which are commercially viable and scalable uh, and re re replicatable and then 25 should be the year where we're doing the uh, exponential growth I mean that's uh, that's my best yeah, no, I think that, that seems that. reasonable to me I mean I do think you know not wanting to name drop but I think someone like Larry Fink I think has had a profound impact you know, not only on the buy side, because people are like, well, what are BlackRock doing? Because they do have a multifaceted strategy, but then also on the sell side, because they provide so much in terms of dollars to the market. Um, so I think, you know, that's been good. So I think mobilizing, you know, kind of, I guess, more market participants, the demand, I guess, is, is hugely important. So I think next year, even if it's a small number of projects, but you have the market coalesce around them, create the liquidity and actually show that there is value there. I think to me that that will happen and that's going to um, and then I agree. And then it becomes kind of people don't need to talk about tokenization and blind technology. And we held a conference in New York a couple of weeks ago. And Christy Moy, I'm sure many of you know, I, I, you know, she was just spot on. Like, if you're a trader, you, you don't want to be talking about tokenized assets. You don't want to be talking about what software you're using. It's really just kind of what benefits do you extract? And you know, if I'm trading whatever market is and the capital I use is less, the liquidity costs are cheaper because we're just more efficient. That's a positive. You don't need to know any more than that. And I, I... So you, we're going through this transition, like you said, um, twenty twenty four is the year where they're going to be starting to do uh, um, going to, into production. And we're, uh, um, I've got another video to play you from um, uh, Flare Kinetics, um, uh, where they talk about um, uh, what Ripple is going to be doing and the, the builders that are coming into the market on the Flare, um, on the Ripple and Flare ecosystem. And Flare is one of the tokens that I do actually help. If you like this kind of content, guys, like and subscribe. So let me go and get you that video up. Uh, Mickey D uh, Fresh put this one out. Um, and this is uh, Flare Kinetics uh, to kickstart DeFi. Um, basically, this is about Ripple, what Ripple's gonna, since Ripple run their case, um, the they have gone on a massive tear um, globally, and I've also got one more video to play after this, where um, somebody in Bloomberg reckons um, uh, XRP uh, price will outstrip Bitcoin. But I'm not gonna, I'm not banking on that at this moment in time. I just want um, XRP and all the other uh, projects around um, the XRP ledger, like the Flare um, system ecosystem to do its thing uh, and and then we will see exceptional growth growth but listen to this uh, i think that that will actually change the way we view finance both uh, from a blockchain perspective um but again you know from a global perspective and, and worth noting that um they when they won that victory that was uh, everybody was talking about well xrp as a token has gone up 80 some percent uh, since then, I would argue that a lot of that has little to do actually with them running, although partially. Um, they've made some massive moves globally uh, from a regulation perspective. They've acquired custodians in, in different jurisdictions. They're really making a move with governments and educational in institutions and, and pretty much anybody uh, from an enterprise perspective. Uh, there's some really, really cool stuff, I think, coming down, coming down from Ripple. Uh, there's some really really cool stuff i think coming down coming down from ripple um, and 
all of the philosophies that we looked at, at least I looked at when I came over to this space, many of them are still intact. We've always intended to create a better financial system for people globally with greater access, greater opportunity, and democratizing, democratizing opportunity. And uh, so I think we're really getting to a point actually now where that's starting to become a reality. Um, so some of the trends that, that I really like globally is we're seeing a heck of a lot more connective tissue with the traditional finance system. Um, this is important, obviously, because until you can operate your entire life on crypto, which surprisingly you can do a lot of, um, but until then you need a way to get to and from fiat, especially in some of these emerging markets and, and smaller places. We're seeing groups like uh, XRP and many others uh, acquire custodians and licensing globally to, to make sure that that connective tissue is there. So I'm very excited for this. I, I think finally we're seeing kind of that holy grail of there's some regulatory clarity that's coming globally. So we're starting to get some ideas on how we can um, stay in the good books of regulators and continue to build. So that's very exciting. Uh, I think we're seeing, like I said, a lot more connectivity with traditional systems. Uh, globally, which is very exciting. We're seeing a lot of new innovative and sophisticated products all at the same time. And we're now getting, finally, the last piece of the holy grail, in my opinion, is um, we're finally getting that positive uh, momentum with respect to enterprise uh, and some TradFi interest in participating. Uh, I'm, I'm a little biased because I, I really see the future as, as being one of a hybrid where it's not DeFi versus TradFi and only one wins. Um, the other one must die. Um, I, I really do think there's a bit of a hybrid reality and uh, I think we're getting pretty darn close to it. There's a lot of exciting trends uh, from my perspective at the moment. There's only, you know, a handful of people that can actually, you know, take this to the through the court system. Again, we've talked about this a lot. Uh, total legal fees, as far as I know, um, on fairly good authority, um, is nearing half a billion dollars. Uh, between Ripple themselves and Brad and other individuals that are also being sued by the SEC. It's crazy, absolutely crazy um, how much money they've spent on this. And yeah, again, you know, none of us could, could actually do that. It's worth noting that um, they, when they won that victory that was uh, everybody was talking about, well, XRP as a token has gone up 80 some percent. Uh, since then. I would argue that a lot of that has little to do actually with them winning, although partially. Um, they've made some massive moves globally uh, from a regulation perspective. They've acquired custodians in, in different jurisdictions. They're really making a move with governments and educational institutions and, and pretty much anybody uh, from an enterprise perspective. Uh, there's some really, really cool stuff I think coming down, coming down from Ripple. Um, uh, there's some really, really cool stuff I think coming down, coming down from Ripple. So I'm Mickey B. Fresh, and um, crypto is our rebellion. It is a rebellion against a system that is unworthy of its authority. It's our rebellion against coercion and servitude. It is our rebellion against the economically ignorant, the endlessly imperious, and the ethically impotent. Crypto is our rebellion against permission. And it is no less than a noble reclamation of dignity and grace as free and sovereign individuals in the service of peaceful civilization. That is why we are here. For the truth is that we don't require permission to build great things from those petty tyrants who build nothing. And this was the very principle on which America was founded. Crypto is a technology of individual freedom and a declaration of financial independence. Crypto is the freedom to act out our own economic interests as free men and free women in a just society. To trade, to exchange, to deal, to build, to barter. We should be optimistic for what a time to be alive at the dawn of such peaceful revolution where any two people on earth can trade value without permission. Does that scare you or does that thrill you? The traditional intralegal financial territory was lost long ago to the political circus. So now we venture into a new territory that we've built extra legal and permissionless. Here in this new land, west of the old, we admit only a subservience to moral virtue, to mathematics, and to the awesome power of open, composable, immutable code. 
In our audacity, we build things and force them on no one. And we have invented, not just on the clean whiteboard of imagination, but in the dirty cauldron of real engineering, the world's first and only transparent, objective financial system for all mankind. We built it without a dollar of tax money, and we built it without permission. Consider what it means to be in opposition to this development, to be opposed to objective, transparent rule sets and voluntary association among consenting adults, to demand the compliance and submission of peaceful people at the point of a gun. Examine those who act like that, and you will discover where those enemies of humanity so pitifully lay. They are done ignoring us. They're certainly still, still laughing at us, and they've obviously started to fight us. But we will win, ethical arguments aside, because man is a capitalist creature, and capital flows where it is respected. Like water, it flows where it may. And as the permissions of the fiat system constrain and strangle, so our open, decentralized alternative stands ready to receive it. True innovation is messy sometimes veering in unhelpful directions and back again. But capital will flow to well-ordered, decentralized finance as water flows indelibly to the sea, and both will happen naturally, and both will happen without permission. Thank you. I like that. I absolutely like what he said. Um, and thinking about what's ha been happening over the last... Um, three years it's all been it's all been about control they have wanted to stop the system they're now having to embrace it but at the same time they still want to have control over it and i like um this guy from Brockwood said eventually it will just i think their their hold will just dissipate because they won't be able to do anything about it it'll just be an avalanche or, 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 and people will wake up because especially after this this next carving that's coming up um the next couple of years are going to be wild for crypto barring nothing, um, barring we don't have some massive worldwide war, war, war or something of that nature, or some massive black swan event. Um, barring, barring all of that, I think crypto, even if, it, if, if we have that, crypto will still bounce back anyway. It's been through, especially Bitcoin, if you think about how Bitcoin's been through so much over the last um, 10 years in particular, you know, the, the, the way they've been trying to manipulate it, um, and you know, dump on people, etc., etc., manipulate the market, so uh, and, and cause inflation and stuff like that. Um, we're seeing a change. People are fed up. People are fed up with the old system because it's not um, viable anymore. It's not viable for them. It's only viable for those who print the money at the top and um, print money into the future of your children's children, your children's children's children. You know, the debt in America is unsustainable. And what they're doing is causing wars around the world in order to justify printing more money. We want peace. Here's, uh, I'm going to play a, a short clip from um, Bloomberg. Um, well, it's not literally from Bloomberg. And this guy's called Moneyside and he's put this one up about XRP outperforming Bitcoin. So let's hear financial news has repeatedly brought up the potential of Bitcoin and, more notably, XRP outperforming Bitcoin. This isn't a new narrative. It's a recurring theme, especially their reference to the $60,000 price point for XRP. While some might think this is fresh news, it's not. We've seen similar speculation before. In a striking example, Bard AI has confirmed that Forbes, another giant in the financial news arena, once published an article with the headline, The New Bitcoin is XRP, and it's headed to $59,400 $172. Intriguingly, this article was taken down minutes after its release. This information isn't just hearsay. It's been corroborated by multiple AI systems, including chat, GPT, and others. What's particularly noteworthy is the alignment in these reports. The Bloomberg analysis and the now-vanished Forbes article both pinpoint a similar trajectory for XRP, a trajectory that suggests it could not only rival but potentially surpass Bitcoin. This is significant, especially considering Bitcoin's historic peak at around $60,000. The convergence of these insights from respected financial outlets adds a compelling layer to the discussion about XRP's future value. It's essential to explore the underlying reasons behind these bold predictions. What anyway, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, I'm not sure if I buy into that being the case at this moment in time. Um, it could do, XRP could possibly do that, but XRP has got an awful lot of um, 
uh, things going for it, where Bitcoin is more like a store of value, XRP is uh, really for faster payments. So, um, and for what I understand, it needs to be a high valued asset to fac facilitate uh, a lot of money. There's no point in being 60 cents um, or 62 cents per coin. It needs to be a lot higher than that. Whether it be a thousand or five or whatever, I don't know. But um, it, it, uh, XRP has got real good uh, partnerships. Uh, um, you know, they're, they're really working up with banks, as you heard earlier on. So, is it worth having some? Not financial advice. If you like this kind of um, content, do like and subscribe. Take care of yourself, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.